Welcome to the show. I am your host, Dusty Thunder, and I invite you to join me on a wondrous journey through reading and discussing precarious scenarios from Reddit and other sources. What's the goal? Mainly entertainment, but also to learn how to better identify and manage difficult situations ourselves. It's a learning experience. That's also fun. There may be strong language. There will be red flags. Let's go. All right, coming up, we have stories about... Cruises, ending relationships, sitting on laps, kicking your daughter out, fake apologies, misogynistic brothers, and birthday dinners. I know the way that I read that made it sound like that was all one really f***ed up story. Those are all separate stories. Not cruises, ending relationships, sitting on laps, kicking your daughter out, fake apologies, misogynistic brothers, birthday dinners. It's not one story. Will I be the astronaut if I go on a cruise against my girlfriend's wishes? I mean, right now, I'd say probably. But let's see how this shakes out, huh? Boring post, but please help so I can show her the comments. I'll keep this short and simple, but I'll answer any questions in the comments. My girlfriend and I were broken up in December, at which time I planned a cruise with my friends. During this time, she admittedly said she thought she'd never see me again. So obviously, I didn't make these plans out of spite. Now that we're back together, she wants me to cancel. Problem is, I've already spent somewhere around $3,500, none of which is refundable. She says the money doesn't matter if I value our relationship and I should respect her feelings of jealousy and give her her place as my woman. Yeah. This jealousy stems from the fact that one of the friends is female, the other two friends male. I've known her for over 10 years. She's always been an amazing supportive friend when times were dark. We were never in a relationship and there was never an ounce of sexual tension or that sort of thing. We both get along well with each other's boyfriends slash girlfriends throughout these 10 years as well. So will I be the astronaut if I go? I do not think I will be the astronaut at all. In any world, is this a valid and reasonable request on her part? edit she says she won't be here when i get back if i go so she's going to die on this hill edit number two by her own words this is also not a trust issue this is a hundred percent a jealousy issue no cheating ever occurred is there a difference between a trust issue and a jealousy issue is there let's talk about that first is there a difference a jealousy issue is a trust issue is it not because what is there to be jealous about if not the time that person gets with your significant other. One additional comment from OP here. For her, marriage equals cutting off all female friends out of respect. Being so busy, I make plans with friends maybe a a handful of times a year, but usually they're last minute or on the way type of situations. If I make plans in advance, she insists on going. And if she can't, and my buddy has his girlfriend present, for example, then there's no reason for me to go. This is a control issue, buddy. This isn't a, I think he'll cheat on me type of thing. It's a, I don't want any woman to give him any bit of attention kind of thing. They're the same thing. Top comment here. Commenter repeats OP's OP's text. She says, the money doesn't matter if I value the relationship and I should respect her feeling of jealousy. And, or the uh, commenter's comment here. Ha 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 ha. Then tell her you will cancel if she pays the cost to you first. If it's not about the money and it's about respect, then she will have no problem paying the expense she is asking you to incur. You should enjoy your cruise and be happy being single when you return. She is unreasonable and sounds like more trouble than she's worth. This girl ain't the one. I can guarantee you that. A good partner would never ask this of you. A good partner would not make you seem like the bad guy for this. A good partner would never use the ultimatum to force your hand to something unreasonable. She's nothing but trouble. You deserve better. NTA. But if you stay with this girl and cancel that trip, YTA. Okay. Uh, yeah, there's so much like conflicting shit that she's saying here. Clearly, she's confused about who she is as a person and what her issues are, right? <laughs> Heather Lee says, can we all say controlling narcissist? There's a lot of control issues going on here, but to openly say it's not because I don't trust you. It's because I don't trust them. You okay? let's follow that train of thought for just a second. If you trust your significant other, but don't trust the people around them, you think the people around them are going to force themselves on your significant other and they aren't going to be able to defend that somehow because it's the only way that's an actual problem, right? It's like I, I don't want my significant other to be in the presence 
of anyone else because I don't want them to be the recipient of attention from anyone else. If that line of thinking were true, it wouldn't just be girls that this would apply to, right? What if one of his friends likes guys? Is that friend now excluded as well because he would give him potentially some kind of attention because he's attracted to his, to his type of person? This doesn't make any sense. Her argument here doesn't make any sense. It's a her problem that she's making his problem. If she understands and accepts that she doesn't think he's going to do anything, she just doesn't trust the other people. She still has a trust issue with him because otherwise it would be a non-issue. She doesn't have to like other people giving him attention, but are you going to keep him a prisoner? Are you going to, you're going to keep him locked up in the house so he can't go anywhere ever when no one's allowed to look at him. They, you're right, Lauren. They weren't together when these plans were made either. She acknowledges that, but she's saying that it doesn't matter. We're together now. So you can't go how much you want to bet. She found out about this plan and got back with him to prevent him from going. Because he was going to do something that she couldn't control when they weren't together. So she got back with him just to foil this plan. Either way, if he goes or doesn't go, she may break up with him anyway afterwards. Because the whole point of her getting back with him was to exert this level of control. This is a you problem, girlfriend. It is not OP's problem. OP, by choosing to stay with this person, has made it a him problem as well. But that is his choice. And he needs to choose to make it only a her problem by leaving her. NTA, go on your damn cruise, bro, and have fun without her. Post so many pictures on Insta. I mean, more pictures than you've ever posted on a trip in your entire damn life. 3X that shit, right? Every single damn moment. And make sure to include... Everybody that's there with you. I, bring in extras. I don't give a shit. You could be eating dinner on the cruise. Pull the people from the table next to you, especially if it's heavily female loaded, and take a selfie and include them. Make sure you don't just do this, but you do it and you fly the flag, man. I will not be controlled by someone who has deep emotional issues. And I will not make their problems my problems. I will plant this flag. And I will say nay nay. Does that about sum it up? I'm getting petty. I am getting petty. I told you I had the sass. I have the sass queued up tonight. You know what sucks is that he, I don't know how long he's been with this person. Let's back up and see if we can dissect that. Mm, they were, no, we have, we have no idea how long they were together before they broke up in December and then got back together. I have a feeling that this is the kind of relationship that is on again, off again, on again, off again, on again, off again, on again, off again. Which isn't a great sign, right? It's not a great sign. It's not a sign of stability. That's for damn sure. The bottom line is she needs help. She has to move on with this this blockage that she has that is preventing. It's an emotional blockage. She needs to be able to move on from this because it is going to prevent her from having a healthy relationship for the rest of her life. She's going to have to get comfortable with the fact that People are going to be able to see her significant other. They're going to be able to smile. They're going to be able to wink. They're going to be able to flirt. Not a damn thing that she can do to prevent other people's actions from happening. There, there, there's nothing she can do about that. She has to accept it and say, I trust my partner enough that those things don't matter. Because it doesn't matter how much attention they give him. He would never do anything to break my trust. So, so there is a trust issue because that she's not able to say that that's not strong enough for her, which means there is a little bit of a trust issue, right? But it's not a him problem. This is something I'm guessing something really bad uh, or repeatedly bad happened with a relationship in the past. And now she's just projecting that onto him. She's got to be able to move on from it. Otherwise, she's just going to be twiddling her thumbs saying, I wonder why I can't keep a relationship together. Definitely her problem. Am I the astronaut for leaving a dinner party after a girl sat on my husband's lap? 
I am still so shook with everything so sorry for my rambling. My husband Jake and I have been married for three years and from the beginning he was very close with his best friend's sister, Cindy, 18 female. While my husband would often talk about her and tell how he had seen her grow up throughout the years. Cindy is always very bubbly and seems very fond of Jake as well. I remember when we were dating, she would ask to come along on our dates a lot. It's interesting. I never really said anything as I liked spending time with her as well. She was like a little sister to me. When we announced our engagement, she asked my husband to better not forget her after being a married man and to still hang out with her. You could definitely take that the wrong way. I'm hoping it's innocent. Let's, it's, it's, let's please be innocent. Please be innocent. Well, we got married and I even made her my bridesmaid. Soon, we moved to a different state and kind of lost contact. Now, Jake's best friend came to stay with us for some time, and Cindy came along as well. Now, the moment she saw us, the first thing she said was how hot my husband has gotten, and she was glad he didn't look like those boring married men. Okay. <laughs> There's not really a way to take that an innocent way, so not innocent. Shit. Wouldn't that be an immediate, like, get the fuck out. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but clearly... Clearly, you have no concept of boundaries, so you staying here just ain't gonna work. Just, just go. Just, just go. Good gravy. Then, throughout their stay, Cindy would just ignore my presence and will be way too close with Jake. I told Jake that it was looking a bit inappropriate and to ask Cindy to tone it down, but he said that Cindy is just a bit childish and is that way with everybody. Jake, you're, you're about to become not... Jake from State Farm, but Jake from the State Pen. Oh, wait, she's 18. It doesn't matter. You're going to get divorced because you're letting a teeny bopper. Uh, uh, you know better, Jake. Come on. Come on. And, and being like physically affectionate with everybody isn't a childish thing. That's an adult thing. What, what, what? I think your concept of childish may be a little tilted here, Jake. Well, on their last day, we decided to host a dinner party for everybody. During the party, I was with Jake when Cindy came and told me, oh, I need to steal your husband for a while. And before I could say anything, she grabbed Jake's hand and took him for playing games. I ignored it since it was their last day, but then throughout the dinner, she was getting way too close with Jake and would just drag him away whenever I would be around while giggling at me. When everybody sat for dinner, I sat beside Jake and Cindy came last. She then said, oh, there's no seat and just went and sat on my husband's lap. Everybody was surprised, and Jake said, laughing, Cindy, stop acting like a kid. You're not a kid anymore. Cindy started laughing, saying it was a joke, and got up and sat on another seat while giggling at me. Yeah, I was so angry with the disrespect and the fact that Jake was so cool with it, but I didn't want to say anything bad, so I excused myself and took my car and left. About an hour later, Jake called me asking where I was. I told him I'm going to my friend's house, and I will come over after Cindy has left. I know what I did was terrible, but I was so angry at the time that if I stayed there any longer, I would have probably started fighting or crying. I came the next day and Cindy and her family had left. Jake was very pissed and said I took things too far. Who took things too far, Jake? Who? Who? Who took things too far, Jake? It was your wife who left because she felt disrespected for the 11th time. Who took things too far? I started crying and told him how everything made me feel. He said I was horrible to think such things about Cindy and that she was like his sister. I told him I was not doubting his intentions, but I was hurt by how very disrespectful Cindy's behavior was and how he was enabling her by not saying anything. He started saying that I sounded ridiculous and couldn't even take a joke, referring to the sitting on the lap incident. I said, regardless, I don't want her in my house again. To top it off, Cindy sent a message saying that she was sorry about making me insecure of myself. Oh, and that she would make sure to make me feel better. But I should not have left as it was pretty childish and kind of spoiled the mood. It felt so backhanded, I didn't reply to her. It didn't, that didn't feel backhanded. That was backhanded. I'm sorry you misunderstood is not a f apology, okay? That is a middle finger. I'm sorry you misunderstood. I'm sorry you felt. I'm sorry you. I'm sorry you. I'm sorry you. It is a middle finger, okay? I just told my husband he needs to maintain a distance with Cindy. He asked if I was giving him an ultimatum. I said if he will go as far as disregarding and disrespecting my feelings for Cindy, this really rubbed me the wrong way. And he said since I have such disgusting thoughts in my mind and is giving him an ultimatum anyways, then he might as well leave because he cannot live with such an insecure person who has disgusting thoughts about him. He packed a bag and left for his mother's place. I tried 
tried apologizing numerous times, telling him how sorry I am for everything, but he is ignoring my texts and calls. Later, Cindy's brother texted me, calling me a bunch of names to think like that about his sister, saying Jake should just leave me and a disgusting person like me deserves to be alone. I could not stop crying after that. I don't know how to fix this. Is there a way to even come back? Was I so wrong to deserve this? I don't know anymore. Edit. People are asking our ages. We are 25 years old, just months apart. All right. I have a couple of comments to read here, but okay. The brother, the, br- the brother who, who called after the fact, uh, Cindy's brother, OP's hubby's friend called or texted berating her for thinking that way. He's in denial. He is in denial and probably has been for years. He's like, no, no, no. This, my sister is not trying to really put the moves on this guy. Right. She's just, this is just how she is. I mean, only with him, but this is just, this is just, it's just, it's not real. It's not real. It's not real. It's not real. And Jake is acting the same way. These two dipshits are both in denial. Meanwhile, Cindy's frolicking along, lubing everybody up. She's just like, she's, she's just, so promiscuous throughout this that they're that they've had to put themselves in a state of denial and op here is just like seriously everybody's okay with this and then i know we overuse the word but f- gas lit the shit out of her i mean like oh no, no you're the problem you're the problem that's absolutely disgusting to think that way you are so disgusting no op you are not disgusting You are not crazy. You are not wrong. A line was crossed here after you spoke up about it multiple times. That's the kicker. It doesn't matter what was happening here. The fact that you said, I am uncomfortable with this. And he said, get comfortable with this is it. It doesn't matter what was happening. The fact that you issued a discomfort and he ignored it and said, your feelings aren't valid. And then that line was crossed and there was a consequence. And then he gaslit you into say, into thinking and saying that you were the monster here. Maybe he was just waiting until she's 18 and he actually has the hots for, her. I don't, I, I, IDFK doesn't matter. Nothing that anybody did here. Save you. OP is okay. Relevant comments on this commenter. You said the other people at the party just stared. Am I mistaken? And no one said anything to either of you. OP's response, Cindy, her brother and his girlfriend, their cousin and his boyfriend were present. It wasn't a big dinner. And when it happened, everybody did did get silent. But as my husband laughed it off, they didn't say anything either. But they saw that I was not okay, So things were awkward. I don't know what happened after I left. Maybe they said something to Cindy or not. I don't know. I was so overwhelmed with everything. I didn't want to talk about it anymore. You should. Uh, OP, you should reach out to to the people that were there. It was their cousin with his boyfriend. I, I don't care if you don't have a direct line to them. If you're not going to be, if that's someone who's not going to be in your life after shit, hit, shit hits the fan here, they're all witness. And because Teeny Bopper messaged you and said you ruined the night and everything got awkward afterwards, it wouldn't have gotten awkward unless they had an opinion about it too. Because had you left, had you left and nobody gave a shit and they really thought that you were the problem. They would have laughed it off and partied hard the rest of the night. It's not what happened. So reach out to them, ask what their thoughts were and ask what happened after you left. That's what I'm, that's what I would do. I'm just saying, unless you don't give a shit anymore because it's over. And if that's the fact, screw it, who cares? But I would be curious. I would be curious. And at this point, because you're starting to feel like you're crazy because everybody connected. This situation is telling you that you're crazy. You might just find somebody who thinks you're sane. Because they saw the same shit you did. The question was, am I the astronaut for leaving a dinner party after a girl sat on my husband's lap? Nope, you were not. (sighs) When your partner tells you they are uncomfortable with something, it is a warning. It is a warning that a reaction is coming. They are doing you a favor by giving you a heads up. Take it seriously. Ah. Am I the astronaut for wanting my 34 female daughter, 15 female, to come live with me again? I had my daughter, Stephanie Young, 19 to be exact, and thus had to stop my whole life and raise her alone since her dad up and ran away till she was six and later and later on met my now husband, Mike, 35 male. We fell in love quickly and got married when Stephanie was eight. 
Mike had two other kids, Olivia, nine, and Jackson, six. We tried hard blending our family, and it worked out for the most, except Stephanie. She didn't like that now she had to share her room with Olivia and didn't like sharing me with them. She would throw tantrums and would correct them if they ever called me mom. Mike didn't like her attitude, and when Steph was 10, told me to either pick him or her. Back then, Stephanie was at fault, so I picked Mike and sent her to my parents. We had a huge fight once my mom realized that I was sending her there for a while, and my dad called me a bunch of names for abandoning my daughter, which I, which I wasn't. I was letting her have her space and save the peace for the family. I did keep tabs on her online, and like I knew, my parents set her straight, and she started doing good in school and had lots of friends and is really involved in their community. I tried calling her often, but she would dismiss me fast, saying my mom wanted her to help her make dinner or my dad wanted to take her camping, so she was out. Now onto the problem. Mike and me finally got us a house that has enough bedrooms for everybody, including Stephanie. I want to get her back home, but she told me she liked living with her grandparents and they were nicer and more fun than me, and she liked how big her room was. My dad made it specifically for her. She loved being with her animals. My parents own a big farm and she has a lot of animal friends, cows, horses, and such. And she didn't want to leave her friends and community she built in their small town. I told her I wanted her back home, but she said no. My parents told me I couldn't force. And when we argued, I yelled at them that they couldn't keep my daughter from me. They kicked me out saying Stephanie picked her home and I needed to accept it whether I liked it or not. I tried calling again and texting Stephanie, but now she blocked me. I don't know. Am I the astronaut for wanting my daughter back home? Uh, okay, she, uh, she's 15. She's 15. <sighs> yes, mom, you pulled an asshole move here. We'll, we'll get into that. Uh, the legality side of things is going to vary state by state, right? But, but if she's 15... She does have some say in where she wants to go in most states. I'm guessing she the the issue here was not just space. And, and the fact that I think mom OP here is distracted by space, right? She, we didn't have room for her before. That's why she was unhappy. Now we have room. Now she will be happy. It is not that simple. Blended families are tough from the get go, but I, I think it's a kind of a it's a package deal situation, right? I think if you've got a blended family and like you are having trouble integrating your side of that family, you don't say, Hey, this part of my family, get out. You would go with them. It would split your family. You chose your husband and his kids because they weren't making problems. And I understand that you think that was the right move at the time, but what you did, you didn't just send her to a different space where she has more space and you give her more time. You put your relationship on pause and a relationship with your child is not the kind of thing that you can just pick up with way down the line. Pausing that relationship is, is essentially her learning to live without you. And the fact that you had your parents pretty much being her caretakers her guardians during that time means that she got used to life without you. She got used to having different providers. She got used to a different school system, which is a big deal and will be a big deal if and when this comes down to a legal battle kind of thing. You're trying to you're trying to force shock onto her by moving her schools, but you chose to put her in the situation that she's in right now to begin with. And now she doesn't want to leave rather than say, OK, we need to go to family counseling. We need to get through this issue. We need to solve this problem. You put a Band-Aid on it, took a shot of morphine and said, I'm removing this person who is the problem and putting them in a box over here. You ignored the problem. The problem was your daughter. You ignored the problem that was your child. Instead of working on it, working through it, figuring out how to fix things, question for you, OP, if you hadn't blended your families and it was you and your child living alone together and you started having attitude issues or whatever was going on there, would you choose to send her away then? I think the answer would be no. You can't do this to a kid and then try to go back on that Equal amount of shock, more so now because she's happy. She's stable. She likes where she's at. And you want to rip all that from underneath her and put her in a situation that she was unhappy in before just because you have a room for her now. Yeah, that's an asshole move. Yeah, that's an extremely selfish move because you are you are openly admitting that you don't care if she's happy now. You want her back. I think as parents, I think as parents, we... You have to be able to identify when you're making a decision for you and not for them, not for your kid, right? 
I think you have to do that. And I see this kind of thing. It's, it's easiest to see whenever, whenever the babies like babies, like rocking babies, right? Um, everybody wants to hold the baby, right? They don't, they don't want to hold the baby for the baby's sake. They, they don't want to hold the baby to make the baby more comfortable. They want to hold the baby because it fills their cup up. Correct. Has nothing to do with actually being a caregiver for the child. It's the same kind of notion here where mom wants to wants her baby back. She wants to be able to hold her baby, but hasn't been caring for this baby for for so long. It is a selfish decision because if if her daughter's well-being was truly the priority here, she would choose to let her stay where she's at and understand that her daughter is probably going to thank her for it. And she would have a better relationship in the long run because she chose her daughter's best interest over her own. She's trying to choose selfishly again. This is going to be one of those five years down the road. I don't know why I haven't heard from my daughter in five years kind of stories. You have to think about what's best for your kid. You have to. And right now, OP, you are only thinking about what's best for you. So, oh, man, yeah. being a parent is tough, right? Like very, very, very often it is very hard to see what the right decision truly is. I do not believe this is one of those situations. I do not believe that if you're having trouble integrating your families together, blending your families together, together that shipping one off to the grandparents is the answer. I don't believe that's that's the answer. So there's strike one. And then just because you get into a different space where you have more room and you have a, a, this kid can have her own bedroom, you want to rip her up from her being happy in the setting she's in right now and bring her back for you, not for her. It's at least a two. At least a two, but uh, repeated choices here really lead me to the one. Oh well, yeah, and think about think about what the kid feels throughout here too. This kid's fifteen now, and you know we don't know how long this was. So when Steph was ten, told me to pick her. Okay, so yeah, it's been five years. So for the past five years, to know that that you got kicked out of your own family to go live with grandparents, and you've been happy and have been able to rebuild a life since then, to know. That your bio mom is willing to rip all of that away just to have you in the same box as her. Yeah, you got to feel just very unprioritized, I think is the the nicest way to say it here. Yeah, we're throwing you here, mom. This is we're sending you all the way to ask on one because these are repeated selfish decisions here. Repeated. And to not be able to discuss any of acknowledging that uh that it would not be the right move for her, that she would be unhappy or that you're pulling her from a situation that she is truly happy in right now and really not discuss what's best for her or her thoughts or her feelings here. I mean, you listed off the things that she liked about living there, but to really get to the deep root of it and say, I know she'd be starting all, all over in a different school system, making friends from scratch. She's still not going to be comfortable in this in the environment that we're in because it's been five years and chances are they aren't going to get along right off the rip. We didn't discuss any of those things. You just want her in the same box as you're in because it makes you feel better. Fills your cup up. I think you have to understand and be able to identify when filling your cup removes from someone else's. Night pants in some states at 15, the kids can choose where they want to live. And I, I think, you know, I think it is judging on what I've seen from chat so far. Anything past 10, they at least have a say. At least have a say. Title is, Am I the Asconaut for Refusing to Accept an Old Friend's Apology? I, male 33, was best friends with R, female 33, for 10 years, and although we had many common interests and hobbies, our personalities clashed often. She was a great person to be around, but she was also very jealous and insecure. The main issue we would argue about was her attempts at telling me who I could and couldn't be friends with, and this was also a rule she attempted to make when it came to relationships I was in. Hold up. Wait. Hold, hold on. I'm confused. Um, okay. This is a bestie. Not a significant other. Ten years. And she tried to control who he was allowed to be with. Okay. One night. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Forgot. One night while we were out with friends, R pulled me aside and demanded. I break off my relationship that I was in at that moment. I wasn't in one. And stated she would need to approve of anyone going forward. She also tried to downplay personal issues I was going through at the time and stated that these didn't need as much attention as I thought. 
I left and she sent texts all that night restating everything we said. R never apologized for what she said and I cut her off. This past week, a mutual friend of ours told me R's jealousy has caused most of our mutual friends to keep their distance and she wants to apologize, starting with me. I refuse to hear her out because it doesn't seem like she's changed and I'm also in a happy and healthy relationship, which R has a history of having problems with. It's pretty safe play there, bro. This friend has stated that by not accepting her apology, it'll be ensuring that R is left as an outcast to our other mutual friends. So, am I the astronaut? That's a her problem, bro. It's not your problem. It's a her problem. Edit, I want to clear up some information. I'm getting asked and I'll add another edit to my post soon as well. I could have worded these posts better to explain my apologies. This incident with R happened seven years ago and I started dating my girlfriend four years ago. I've been with girlfriends since. R and I never dated or had sex at any point. I did not have sexual relations with that woman. I had no contact with R over those seven years and only heard pieces of what she was up to from mutual friends who would bring her up in conversation. So seven years, no contact. And and at some point in there, it was it was her trying to mend fences with the group. I, I'm guessing it was before this point of seven years later, right? Had to be, had to be, had to be, had to be, had to be. Okay, here we go. Uh, update. That's right. We have an update. Cut ties seven years ago with an ex-friend and she attempted to sabotage my relationship. Several weeks back, I made a post about an ex-friend, R, who I cut off because of her possessiveness and jealousy. To briefly summarize, she confronted me at an outing and told me I would have to abide by her rules of needing her approval for anyone coming into my life. I cut her off and haven't spoke to her since. The previous post I made was about a mutual friend of ours who told me over the past several years, R had caused most of our friend group to distance themselves from her, and R asked to speak with me first to apologize, which she hoped would make our friends be more accepting of her apologies. It sounds like a play. I didn't agree to go along with this, and from what I heard, this caused her to call and text all of her friends going back and forth between bashing everyone and begging for their forgiveness. (laughs) I've had her blocked everywhere, so she didn't attempt to reach me. Hold up. Hold up. She she flip-flopped between bashing them and then asking, like, begging for their forgiveness. Oh, my goodness. I can't imagine why these people don't want to be friends with her. I can't imagine. I I can't imagine. I can't imagine. Okay, hold up. I've been with my girlfriend for a few years now, and she's really amazing. Girlfriend is aware of R and knows how problematic she was while we were friends. Yesterday, R sent girlfriend a message on social media accusing me of cheating, and she provided dates and times of this cheating. Who who, who is he cheating on? These dates were days I was with my girlfriend, so those didn't match up. Oh, oh, R sent girlfriend a message accusing me of cheating. Okay, so R sent a message accusing OP of cheating. Okay, got it, got it, got it. These dates were days that OP was with girlfriend, so those didn't match up. Girlfriend showed me the messages and asked if she could press further for more information, which I agreed to out of curiosity. It's dangerous. R began to word vomit, and lie after lie was being sent to the chat. Girlfriend thanked her and said she would speak with me, but we left it at that. This morning, girlfriend made a post of the both of us out on a date this past weekend with pictures and some loving words. A couple of hours later, my friend B said R was calling the last of our friends she speaks to with the same accusations of me being a cheater. No one believed her. She lashed out at them, and now they're all blocking her. As of right now, R has been on social media having a meltdown and posting about betrayal, fake friends, and oddly, the one who got away. I can't say with certainty she's referring to me as this one, but it would explain a lot. Dude, who else would she be talking about at this point, man? Edit, thank you all for your insight and advice. Both girlfriend and I have screenshots and we're given screenshots from my friends to keep for the time being. We have been notified or we have both notified our bosses of the situation and our families as well. R doesn't know where we live as far as I know, but we've had cameras up for a couple of years. As for R, she got a lot of pushback on her post and a lot of her family were concerned enough to reach out to her and her parents. Those posts were taken down yesterday and nothing else has happened since. Ah, ah, so clearly... This bestie wasn't a bestie. This bestie was, I know, I know, I know we hate the word friend zone, but this bestie was friend zoned, but was determined to somehow worm her way out of there by exerting total and complete control over your life, OP. And whenever that didn't work, she freaking fell apart. Seven years later, tries another freaking Hail Mary. 
seven years later? Like, what do you, what what does she think is gonna happen? What does she think is gonna happen? Uh, what did she think was gonna happen? Even if this worked, even if she convinced Opie's girlfriend that he was cheating and they broke up, did she think he was just gonna be like, "I'm so destroyed, please come back into my life, crazy ex bestie"? That's Delulu, faux show. Sure. Trample or Ross and Rachel? <laughs> we, uh, uh, I mean, I I didn't I didn't think until they mentioned it. You know, having cameras up or fearing for their safety, I should have. Um, but but I know that there are people out there who are unstable enough to try to detonate the relationships or future or paths of those who will not comply as a way of exerting one last piece of control. Now this is because it happened to me. It's a story for another day. I'm almost wondering because this was a seven year after, because it had been seven years in this story where she just came back out of nowhere and tried this Hail Mary. I wonder if she was in therapy and fed a line of BS to her counselor. And the counselor was like, well, if you need to do something to move past this trauma. So, um, Maybe she fed the therapist the line about about him cheating or she just cooked this up on her own. But something happened after seven years to trigger this Hail Mary. Something happened. I'm throwing a dart in the dark here, trying to figure out what it was. But if she is getting treatment for something and at this point, she's probably in a deep enough depression where she might be, then then they could have encouraged her to take some kind of action. Of course, it was based on misinformation. So something happened after seven years for her to, to throw this Hail Mary and it did not work out. Title of this story from the AITA subreddit is Am I the Astronaut for Making My Daughter Choose a Different Restaurant for Her Birthday Meal Than the One She Really Wanted? My 39 female daughter very recently had her 17th birthday. My husband, 42 male, and I told her to pick out a restaurant that she'd like us to take her to for her birthday. She chose a seafood restaurant that we'd never been to. And looking over the menu, I saw that the vast majority of the dishes contained shellfish. There were a few fish entrees, as well as some surf and turf, but there were only a couple of non-seafood dishes. Our son, 15 male, is deathly allergic to shellfish. He also can't stand fish. There were only a couple of dishes there that he could actually eat. I didn't want to take him there because I knew that he wouldn't really enjoy his meal and I was worried about cross-contamination. I told my daughter that this restaurant wouldn't work and that she would have to pick out a different one. My son said that he would be fine just staying home, that we could use the money that we would have spent on his meal to just order a pizza for him instead. My husband also insisted that since it was our daughter's birthday, that she should be able to choose the restaurant and that our son would be fine home alone with pizza and video games. But here's the thing. We can only afford to go out as a family every so often. When we splurge on a restaurant meal, I want both of our children there. I insisted my daughter choose a different place and we had a nice meal as a family, but she's still a little salty that she didn't get to have her first choice of restaurants. Most people I've asked say I'm wrong, but again, we can only afford to go out every so often. Is it so wrong that I wanted to do it as a family? My daughter still had a nice birthday meal. Top comment here. (sighs) You're the asshole for a lot of reasons. First, if you were going to put parameters on her choice, you should have told her that beforehand. Second, you seem more hung up on the fact that your son wouldn't like his food than his allergy. Your son prefer your son's preferences are irrelevant. This is your daughter's day. He seems to understand that, but you don't. Third, if you were really concerned about cross-contamination, you could have called ahead to discuss your concerns and see what precautions the restaurant would be willing to take. If that is not satisfying, which would be perfectly understandable, your son offered to stay home. I get that you want to have a family meal, but all you've done is tell your daughter that she is not worth individual celebration. This could have been a great opportunity for you and your husband to have individual time with your 17-year-old, a rare opportunity. Instead, you've squandered that, creating unnecessary conflict and possibly formed resentment between your daughter and her brother. Yeah, that, that, the... It, my 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 favorite part of this story. Hold on, let me get off a of red red light mode here. Uh, let the boy let the boy stay home with pizza, Denise. Yes, yes, exactly. And Elise, yes, a seafood house serving mainly shellfish. Wow, it's crazy. It's just crazy. It's crazy. Uh, even her brother wanted her to have what she wanted. Yes, artsy fartsy. There was a solution. 
presented. Hey, silver platter. What's that on that silver platter? It's a solution. Mom looked at it real close and said, nah. Okay, mom, you are not an asshole for wanting to have both of your kids there because that's a feeling, right? You can feel whatever you want to feel and you're not the asshole for feeling anything. It's what you do with those feelings that can make you the asshole or make you not the asshole. In this case, you allowed that feeling, that selfish feeling of wanting to fill up your own cup, removed from someone else's cup. We just talked about this earlier, guys. Look at it. It's coming full circle now. Full circle. We're going full circle here. I think it was the first story, too. Look at us. Look at us grow and learn. She tried. She did successfully fill up her own cup by removing from her daughters. That's the bottom line. That is the bottom line. She selfishly. She. Mom. Mom was going to be more fulfilled by having both of her kids there, so lessened her daughter's experience so that mom could get what she really wanted. That's a great message to send your kid. Hey, you know what? On your birthday, we're going to do what I really want to do. Just what every kid wants. Solution from the affected person incognito. Yes, absolutely. The person who was who was affected by this whole situation where she chose to go, the person who was going to be affected by that offered the solution. Said, yo, just just let me stay home and eat pizza and play video games. He would have preferred that. And your daughter would have just soaked up quality time with just her parents sitting there with just her at her favorite place to eat. Do you know how much more rewarding that would have been than to force everybody to go to a second tier choice and have a mediocre experience? You said we had a lovely time. But she's still salty. So it wasn't super lovely then, was it? And meanwhile, your son is sitting here, you know, eating whatever's on his plate that you forced him to order, thinking the whole time, man, I really thought I was going to be able to game with my buddies and uh, eat some pizza tonight. But here I am. Happy, happy birthday, sis. You failed hard, mom. And it all comes down to a selfish decision. <laughs> it comes down to a shellfish decision. That was very shellfish of you, mom. It was very shellfish. You chose what you wanted, which was having both kids there instead of what your daughter, whose birthday it was, what she wanted. You chose you over her on her birthday. Yeah. All right, mom, let's talk about mom. Everybody thinks they're doing the right thing, right? Well, and Katie Thunder and I talked about this earlier today. I can't remember what we were talking about. It was somebody doing some stupid shit and everybody thinks they're doing the right thing. Even if they're doing something truly evil, they think it's right for some reason. So mom thinks she's doing the right thing because her priority is keeping her family together. Her priority is the realm, right? Not the individual. In most days, you know, 364 days out of the year, cool. This is the one day where you got to prioritize one kid over the family, over the realm. So I, it was a fail. How big of a fail was it? How big a fail are you? I, it's at least a two. I, I'm I'm going I'm going two here. I don't think mom's evil. Uh, I th I don't think she realizes that she chose herself instead of her daughter. I don't think she realizes it, and I don't think she's evil because I don't think it was malicious. She viewed this as a Kobayashi Maru. She viewed it as a situation where she would lose no matter what was chosen here. So she tried to choose what was best for the whole family. And as long as the family stays together, everything's fine. That's her viewpoint on it. Um, and as a mom, you know, I can see how that would be a first line of defense. 364 days a year. Again, this one day out of the year, it should be to prioritize the uh, the kid's birthday. The kid who has the birthday. Right. So um, I, I think it's a two. It's not malicious. I don't think it's evil. I, I think it was she was ignorant to the fact that she was choosing to fill up her own cup instead of her daughter's.